will give you more than enough time to check. So you should do your questions quite quickly, especially for MCQ, you'll definitely use less than a minute per mark. So um, use the extra time that you garner to highlight, to annotate, to check your answers, check, check, check it. I'll cover that in the review today, okay? All right, um, hi Nikki. All right, looks like um, a lot of us are here. So I'm gonna carry on with the review today and I'll get right into the video. So I'm gonna be reviewing common errors in paper two, okay? And um, along the way, I'll be reminding you of certain practices that we've been doing in class that will help you to cut down on these errors and to be more careful in your answers, okay? <clears throat> All right, so um, the first section on common errors, right? Let's take a look at this question, all right? Johnny, like his brother, enjoys swimming. Now, be very careful here because Johnny is the subject and like his brother is an additional piece of information that does not add to the subject, okay? So, Johnny is singular. Therefore, Johnny enjoys swimming. And one, Johnny, subject, puts S, enjoys, after the verb, all right? So this is a subject verb agreement mistake, all right? Johnny, one subject, puts S after the verb, enjoy, enjoys, all right? Good. Next, steak and baked potatoes are not on Frank's diet. Okay, so this is a subject that has two different participants. One is steak, the other is baked potatoes. So steak, baked potatoes together are many. So many, no S after the verb, therefore steak and baked potatoes are not on Frank's diet. Be very careful whenever you see the word and because it often links two different people, objects or places to form a compound subject in which case there's more than one, therefore it's many, no s after the verb, all right? So steak and baked potatoes are not on Frank's diet. When you're going through especially MCQ questions, be very careful that you're reading uh, the words and um, that connect these two subjects very carefully so that you do not make careless mistakes, all right? Next one, fish and chips. Now this is different. Just now steak and baked potatoes, they're separate items, all right? But here, fish and chips is one dish. It's functioning as a compound subject that works as a single unit. It's similar to a fleet of ships is, or a swarm of bees is. We've talked about this in class, right? So a subject that has many parts of, but uh, is functioning as one unit is a singular subject. So fish and chips, one dish. Fish and chips is Ryan's favorite dish. One puts S, after the verb. Fish and chips is Ryan's favorite dish. Um, I might also say a swarm of bees, a swarm of bees, right? So many bees, but it's one swarm. A swarm of bees is chasing Ryan. Or a fleet of ships, a fleet, a whole collection of many ships, but one fleet. A fleet of ships is setting sail tomorrow. So the whole fleet is moving together, is. So a compound subject can either be separate or together, depending on how it's used. In the case of steak and baked potatoes, they are two separate items put together. So they function as separate and plural. But in the case of fish and chips, a swarm of bees, right, a fleet of ships, they are many items, but they work as one. So therefore, a fleet of ships, fish and chips, a swarm of bees is, all right? So, one puts S after the verb, many no S after the verb. Remember this thing about whether the objects are functioning together or they are functioning separately. That's very important, all right? Next, the little boy, as well as his mother, walks to school every day. So, the little boy, one subject, as well as his mother, remember, as well as, like, the word in the first example, like, they're similar. They add information, but they don't add number. Okay, so the little boy is the subject. Walks to school. So one puts S after the verb. Subject verb agreement. You must not forget this because this is the single most important rule in English. So when you go for your test tomorrow, you're going to encounter subject verb agreement rule all over the place, right? Everywhere. So you must be very confident 
about how to use this rule. And I've just shown you four different examples of how this rule is used, okay? Let's move on with some more. Let's take a look at the next section. The pack of wolves, very similar to what I said, a swarm of bees moves slowly. So the pack of wolves moves slowly. One pack, maybe many wolves, but they all move together. So one puts S after the verb. The pack of wolves moves slowly. Can I change this into a plural form? Right, hello Joseph. Right, can I change the pack of wolves moves slowly towards its prey? Can I rewrite this sentence in such a way that moves becomes move? In other words, I want to change the subject from singular to plural. How can I change it? Uh, what must I remove to make this um, a plural form? Would anyone like to try to change this sentence so that the word moves becomes the word move? In other words, I want to change the subject to many. How would I do it? Okay, I'll give you some time to respond to this. So the pack of wolves, the pack of is a collection, one group of. So it's counting the wolves as one group. How do I break them apart? Yeah, that's possible, Aiden. Right. Why don't you give me an answer? Try. In a complete sentence. Alright. Give me the entire complete sentence. Right. Try writing this sentence that I've just given to you, uh, which is singular. The wolves move slowly towards its prey. Very good, but the word its uh, shouldn't be there, right? The word its should not be there. Please pay attention, Xiaolan. Alright, so the wolves, the wolves or three packs of wolves, packs, there should be an S, Aiden. Alright, move slowly towards its prey or their prey. Yes, that's right. It shouldn't be its prey, it should be their prey. Right, so the wolves, meaning many wolves, move, right, so now it's singular, M-O-V-E, slowly towards their prey, right? There you go, all right? Yes, okay, good. So be very careful here because if I have the pack off in front, then it becomes singular, or a swarm off, it becomes singular. But if I say bees, or wolves, then it becomes plural. Bees fly, wolves move. Okay, right, very good. Thank you for participating everyone. All right, so let's take a look at the next one, everybody. So everybody um, is another very common uh, trick question they like to use. Everyone, everybody. Remember every body or every one is always singular, right? Even though it refers to a lot of people, it's actually just singular. Every body. So you just look at the word body or one. Every body, everyone likes the new toys that they receive at the party. Okay? Next one. Ah, neither nor either or. Okay? Remember, the nearest subject agrees with the verb. Alright? So neither Mr. Tan nor his pupils. So look at the word pupils. It's the nearest subject to the verb. Ah, therefore, his pupils are. All right. So the nearest subject to the verb agrees with it. If it's Mr. Tan, then it becomes is, right? So neither Mr. Tan's pupils nor him. All right. So the if Mr. Tan is nearer to the subject, then it agrees with the verb. Okay. So Miss neither Mr. Tan nor his pupils are familiar, right? Because his pupils are the nearest subject to the verb. Okay, next one, either the boys or their father. So this is the opposite, right? Either or neither, they both function the same, but neither is the negative of either, right? Either the boys or their father. So their father, one father, has taken the umbrella, okay? Now, let me just pause here for a minute and add in one more very common mistake that we often make when we are looking at either and neither, okay? All right, let me just type that in. Okay. So if let's say my question is, James 
does not like, um, say, oranges. Adam also does not like oranges. Right? If I want to change this into a synthesis, neither nor, then I would say neither James nor Adam. Okay, let's take a look at this. All right. Um, neither James nor Adam like or likes. Everyone? Anyone? Neither James nor Adam like or likes. Very good. Likes. Because Adam is the nearest subject to the verb. But notice, all right? Yes, very good. Well done, everybody. Yes. But notice what happens to the does not. Can you all see over here? There is a negative here, right? Does not. Okay? So if you all look at the, the answers again, neither James nor Adam likes... Oh, I'm sorry. I do not know why it hasn't appeared. Likes oranges, right? Okay, yep. Okay. Uh, take a look at the last example. Okay. Neither James nor Adam likes oranges. Now, my question to you is this. Why does the word does not disappear? Anyone? No, it's not because it's repeated. Right? So remember synthesis rule number one. Cannot change the meaning. James does not like oranges. Adam does not like, also does not like oranges. Then suddenly when I move it down, the does not disappears. Why does it disappear? It has to do with the connector, neither nor. Yes, neither nor is already negative. Thank you, Aiden Poe. So the moment I'm using neither nor, yes, negative, that's right. Whenever I'm writing answers in neither nor, I must always remember that I cannot repeat the negative. So if my original question has a negative, I must remove it. Do you all understand? Yeah, so if I don't remove it, then it will look like this. Neither James nor Adam does not like oranges. Okay, and you know that this is wrong, right? It totally looks wrong to me. It totally looks wrong to you, right? So if you don't cancel the negative, then it changes the meaning of the sentence and breaks synthesis rule number one, all right? Yeah, exactly. The two negatives cancel each other and it becomes they like oranges, right? Neither of, of them does not like oranges, which means they both like oranges, which means you've broken rule number one. Excellent. Thank you, Kaylin. Um, and thank you... Um, Charlene, and thank you. Yes, that's right. Some of you have, have gotten it quite quickly. Wonderful. So be very careful when you're working with neither nor because it's a negative. So very often, they'll trick you with a question that's in a the negative. Then your answer is neither nor. So you've got to cancel out the negative like this, like what I've just done. So be very careful there. Okay, next page. Yeah, that's right. So be very careful about that. Okay. So, neither of. Now, this is very similar to neither nor. Neither of the twins. Now, remember, when it's neither of, it's always negative, minus, uh, or, or, or zero. So, it's always one. Okay? So, in English, zero is always one. Okay? So, neither of the twins wants to go to the zoo. Alright? Neither, none, nobody. All these are singular forms. Okay? Wonderful. Yes, you guys are great so far. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All. Ah, now, this is all. All always refers to plural, right? So all of the boys, all of the people, all of the girls, all of the champions are to go to the hot, to the assembly now. Okay, wonderful. Okay, ah, next one. Remember verb, noun, verb? Remember the verb, noun, verb? Okay, when you're using verb, noun, verb structure, the second verb is always in the present plural form. Okay, so Stephanie wondered what happened when she heard the fire alarm ring. So heard, first verb, fire alarm, noun, 
ring verb, the second verb. So the second verb is always in the present plural form. Okay, heard him sing, saw him dance, felt him punch, right? Heard him scold. All the second verbs are in the present plural form. One more example here. Saw the cat jump. Okay? Saw the cat jump. Sensing verbs. Alright? Verb, noun verb, sensing verb. Right? They always follow this pattern. The first verb is in the past tense or whatever tense it is. The second verb is always, always in the present plural form. Okay? Present verb, noun verb. Okay, next. Let's go into synthesis review. Okay? Now, uh, very quickly, your five rules of synthesis. Whenever you finish writing your synthesis answers, always use these five rules to double check that your answers have not changed the meaning, have not changed the tense. If they have a connector moving to the front, that there's a comma taking its place. All right. And if you replace, if there is a repeated subject, you replace it with a pronoun and then the answer should not be longer than the question. So there are five different rules. Do not forget these five rules and use these five rules to check your synthesis answers. Remember to highlight, bracket, number your synthesis questions, your sentences so you can move them around and you don't copy any words wrongly. Remember, carelessness is your big enemy. All right? Don't worry, I'll be done before that. Okay? Yeah, don't worry about that. Okay, next, in synthesis, always check that your subject and verb agreement uh, is there. Remember, nearest subject agrees with the verb for either or, neither nor, right? John and David are, John as well as David is. We covered this earlier. Okay, be very careful. Very good. Okay, now for comprehension, just a few quick tips, all right? Um, remember to check the number of marks for each of the questions. Yes, all right? Um, I'm saying that most of the time it does. There are exceptions, Charlene, but most of the time the answer is shorter than the question, all right? There will be exceptions like reported speech. Sometimes when we have to change uh, tomorrow to the next day, right? So in those cases of reported speech, and reported speech often breaks these rules. Um, for example, reported speech breaks the tense rule, right? It changes the tense. Reported speech also breaks the length rule, okay? Sometimes the answer can be longer than the question. But rule number five is not applicable to every single synthesis question, only most of them. Okay? All right. Okay, so I'm coming down to my last few slides, kids. All right, so those of you who need to leave at seven, don't worry, I'll be finishing this and I'll be posting this video on Edmodo for you to refer to, okay? So um, I was saying in comprehension, check number of marks so that if they give you two marks, you give them two points. Check the tense, question words and keywords, circle, underline, bracket. So your answer will be the same tense as your question. Use the words in the question to answer it whenever necessary or whenever it's possible so that you will make less mistakes. Don't try to invent new, new sentences or words. Answer the question the way it is being asked. And finally, please do not start your sentence with so, as, because. Don't give me incomplete sentences. Answer incomplete sentences. Finally, last slide. For close passage. I did this in my close passage video. You can review it again. Look for neighboring words, left, right words. They will help you to determine which word to fill in for the blank. Check the tense of your answer. If the whole sentence is in past tense, your answer should also be in the past tense if it is a verb. Check your subject verb agreement and read your answer back to yourself in a sentence. Read it, listen to it. Does it sound correct? If it sounds correct, then it's probably correct. If it sounds wrong or weird, it's probably wrong or weird. Double check again, try a different word. Okay, so close passages are also pretty important. Even though there are only four marks now, um, in future, in primary five, it's going to grow to 15. It's going to be huge, okay? So be careful there. Final slide. Remember all these things. Check, 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 and then check some more. Use all the time you have to check, to annotate, to highlight, to see you be your comprehension questions, to review your answers, read them back. Every MCQ question, read it back to yourself. Every comprehension question, Read it back to yourself. Every closed passage question, read it back to yourself. Listen to it. Softly, of course. Don't read it so everybody can hear you. They'll be copying. But softly, read it back to yourself. Review the answer. Does it sound right to you? Is it correct? Then you are confident. Check, check, check. And continue to check. Okay? Yes. 
Do not start with connectors, start with the noun, okay? So start with the question word so that you will not go wrong, okay? Try your best to annotate. I'm not asking for really fanciful annotations, uh, Megan. Just some simple annotations will do that are linked to the question, okay? So like what Mr. Pang did when I modeled answering the comprehension questions, um, I, ch I did that chunk of text and then I just highlighted the relevant words. That's annotation good enough, okay? What is the word we write that's the same meaning as the answer, but the answer is another word? I'm not really sure what you're meaning, Chan. CUB, the questions mean, for the comprehension questions, you need to circle the question word, underline the tense word, and bracket the keywords. We did this in our comprehension video, okay? Yep, circle the question words, underline the tense words, and uh, uh, bracket the um, keywords. So for example, if I could just do one for you right here, Right, um, I think this is Charlene asking. Okay, it's okay if you're not too sure. So what is CUB? I'll give you an example. All right, so um, let's say what was John wearing yesterday? Okay, so I would circle, all right, I would insert um, a shape, uh, a circle. I would circle what, okay. Then I would change the shape fill to zero. What? And then I would underline, I would insert um, another shape. And I would underline the tense word was. Okay. So was because this is a tense word. And then I would bracket uh, John wearing yesterday because these are my keywords. I'm looking for what John was wearing yesterday. Okay. So this is essentially what I do for my comprehension questions. Okay. Yes, of course, you're right, Charlie. Not all questions require CUB, especially the questions that only require you to take the answers or to write a, a word. Um, uh, what word has the same meaning as, then you just write out the word from the passage, okay? So you don't need CUB there, all right? I think you're asking about the vocabulary word uh, in comprehension. What about it? We just find the word in the passage and write it out in the box, okay? Jian? Oh, you're asking what if uh, what if your answer is uh, slightly phrased differently from the answer key? Well, uh, we do accept variations on answers. We're not strict to the point where we only expect the exact answer for comprehension. You can have different words as long as the sentence makes sense and is grammatically correct. Otherwise, you will have marks deducted for grammar. Okay? Um, try your best is a good answer, Kayleen. Never leave any questions blank, boys and girls. All right, that's my advice. Never leave any question blank. Try your very best. If you don't know the answer, just pick an answer that you think is as close to correct as will be and write it down. Never leave any question blank. Okay? Yep. All right. Yes, indeed. Good luck to all. All the best to everybody. I believe in you. You guys have been working very hard for this. You've been studying very hard. You've been paying close attention. You've been working by yourselves and together in a class. So I have confidence that you guys will do well, all right? And remember, on the day of the exams, which is tomorrow, please be well rested. So don't sleep too late tonight. Have a good breakfast tomorrow, but not too full. Remember bananas, fish, um, lots of water, right? Some milk will be good, okay? Yep. Yes, they wish you all the best as well, all right? They'll be rooting for you. Uh, we'll probably have a celebration once uh, we're done with this exam, okay? So um, all the best, everyone. Um, Mr. Hippo says all the best. Mr. Ducky says all the best. You guys are going to be amazing. I know this is going to be a good paper for you. Double check. Be very careful. Um, don't be in a hurry. Take your time. There will be enough time. Um, but people like uh, Sishen, um, Akshaya, please try to keep an eye on the time so you don't spend too much time You know um, where you shouldn't be. Spend a lot of time just um, focusing on finishing and doing it carefully and well, all right? Yes, all the best, everyone. Mr. Pang believes in you, all right? I know you're going to do very well. I look forward to some amazing, amazing results. But remember, even if you make a mistake, it's all right. Don't beat yourself up over it. We're human. We do make mistakes, but we want to be as careful as we can so we can cut down on these mistakes, all right? It's not the end of the world, all right? Do your very best, okay? Do your very best, um, at any point in the exams, if you're feeling a little nervous, just stop, take a deep breath, and then count to five, and then exhale. It will instantly calm you down, right? 
this breathing technique uh, is quite effective, especially when you're nervous. Just take a deep breath. And then out. Deep breath in. And out. And you'll calm down in no time. All right? But remember, you've put in a lot of effort. You will do well. You will be fine. Just don't get too nervous and don't be in a hurry to finish. Take your time, do it properly, do your contextual clues, highlighting, do all of your necessary checks and you will be fine. Yes, sleep early. Tonight, maximum 9 o'clock. If you want to wake up a little earlier to do your revision, wake up. Oh, by the way, if you want to bring your files for revision, bring them, but if not, it's up to you, okay? But um, since your exams are in the first period, you won't have very much time to revise anyway. Maybe bring the notes, right? All the, the printouts of the notes that you can review and revise, okay? All right, bye kids, have a good night. Uh, you're free to ask me any questions at all, right, if you need to. Um, anytime um, later tonight using, um, wow, tonight we have lots of people. Um, Aiden, Jaden, Charlene, Martin, Ashton, Ingrid, Javen, John, uh, Kaylin, Jia En, Chun Hong, Megan Quack, um, Akshaya, Sishen, uh, Ziming, Ziting, okay, um, wow, a lot of you tonight. Good night, everybody. Anytime you want to ask me questions, you're not sure about something, you just want to verify it, snap a picture, send it to me on Flock, and I'll answer you immediately, right? But I will not answer you after your bedtime, so, right? Go through your revision now, go through your English files, bye-bye. Go through your English files, review all your mistakes, right? Review all your principles. Synthesis as well. Go and review all your synthesis, okay? Good night, everybody. Any point in time, if you need any questions, just give Mr. Pang a call. I will gladly answer your questions, all right? Okay. Good night, everyone. I'll be off to edit the video and post it on that Edmodo once we are done. All right, bye. Good job, good job. Good job, everyone. Good job, good night. Bye. Bye, Ms. Hippo says bye. Bye 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 bye. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, Lynn, that's a that's a random question. Okay. Um. Right. My number is nine. Okay. I'm. I'm not gonna.